What is going on everybody? Today we are going to be making these Kratky hydroponic systems. This is my own custom design, so we'll walk through it right after we roll the intro. So these crack key systems are dead simple to build and we'll walk through the construction. Um, this design is my own. Uh, I came up with this myself and it's to meet a few different uh, problems uh, that I needed to solve. Uh, first of all, um, we need to make sure that it is black and opaque. That way algae uh, doesn't grow in these containers and that way the roots don't get sunlight. That's, that's bad for plants roots. Uh, problem number two we have is how do we prevent this from evaporating and sloshing out of here. A lot of these designs that you'll see online, uh, they'll just have pebbles or they'll have some kind of a um, core, coconut core, or some other kind of growing medium. They'll just be exposed to the air. So what that means is that means water can evaporate. Uh, it's going to uh, mean you're gonna have to replace the solution more frequently. And on top of that, your nutrient ratios are gonna get out of balance in here because if water evaporates, your nutrient contents won't. And those nutrient contents, those nutrients will become more and more concentrated in your solution. And that's bad for the plant growth. So this neoprene color solves that solution. Uh, furthermore, um, I'm planning on moving next year onto a boat. And this will prevent uh, it from sloshing around and spilling nutrient solution all over the place. And I can still have a garden. I can hang these. Um, I can suspend these. And that way I can still have fresh herbs and still be able to maintain a garden. So those are the those are the things that I was looking to solve with my design as I was building and coming up with a new cracky system. So what do we need to make this? Like I said, these systems are very, very simple to build. Um, first of all, we need a jar. Um, so I am using quart jars, mason jars. You can also use gallon or half gallon jars if you want. Um, what's really important for this system design is that they're the wide mouth type. These wide mouth jars are exactly three inches across, so that's important. Also what we need is we need uh, some kind of a net cup. You could use maybe a uh, plastic uh, solo cup. You could use a whole bunch of different things. Um, I'm going with net cups just because they are the three inch diameter. They fit perfectly within these wide mouth mason jars. They suspend right in there perfectly. They still give you room to put the ring on and they end up looking like that. So they're a very neat, tidy solution. Uh, they're also not very expensive. I got 25 of these net cups for $16. Uh, these mason jars, you can buy packs of 12 of them for just under $12. So these are also not very expensive. We also need these neoprene collars. These are called clone collars. Um, they're used for cloning plants in uh, hydroponic setups. Uh, they are perforated, so you can squeeze the stems of the plants in there, kind of like this. And these are also not very expensive. I got 30 of these for $16. Since they are a neoprene foam, they will last pretty much forever. They're reusable. Same with the net cups. The other thing we're gonna need is we are gonna need some kind of a pebble. Um, these are designed to wick the moisture up from the bottom of the net cup and the nutrient solution to the plant's roots. Um, when the plant gets more established, its roots will grow down into the nutrient solution. Uh, but while you're starting the plants, we need some kind of a, uh, something to wick the water up. Um, you could use regular pebbles with some kind of a cordage suspended in here to wick the water up. That works fine. Uh, you could also use lava rock, whatever you have lying around. Um, I have uh, a bag of these hydroponic pebbles, so I'm just gonna use these since they're 
technically the right tool for the job. Uh, these are also not very expensive, especially in the quantity we're gonna be using. I got a 10 liter bag of this for $20. This is about one liter and it's gonna be more than enough for us to make uh, a dozen jars. I'm just gonna make six jars today. So we'll probably use uh, just over half of this container here. The other thing that we're gonna need is we will need rubbing alcohol. We will need uh, gesso. This is for preparing our jar for painting. Um, paint does not stick to glass very well at all. Uh, this solves the problem. This is what painters use to prepare canvases and it works very well for preparing glass for painting as well. Uh, a bottle of this, uh, this is a 16 ounce bottle and I picked this up for $7 so it's not very expensive. It's gonna be, oh, I don't know, we could probably do 100 jars with this much. So it's, it's not very expensive. Um, we also need paint brushes and some kind of a paint. Um, I'm using a black acrylic paint. Uh, you could use oil-based paint, you could use spray paint, it doesn't really matter. Any kind of paint will stick to these jars once they're gessoed. So let's go ahead and prepare these jars for painting. So in order to get the gesso to stick properly to the jars, we have to prepare the jars for painting. Now, the easiest way to do this is to use rubbing alcohol. And what we wanna do is we wanna remove any kind of finger oils or contaminants or anything that's going to prevent uh, the gesso from sticking to the jar. We want a perfect adhesion surface. So this process is very easy. We just take our rubbing alcohol, we'll pour some on a paper towel, and then what we'll do is we'll stick our hand inside of here so we don't contaminate the exterior surface, and we'll just wipe this whole thing down. Make sure you get all the corners. Make sure you get the lips really well. And that's it. That'll evaporate off and we'll be good to go. So to remove it, I'm gonna avoid touching any area that I'm gonna be painting. And I will place this upside down to dry. And we'll set that to the side. And we're gonna be preparing five jars today. We already have one here already made, so this will give us a half dozen containers for our kitchen counter herb garden. So let's go ahead and prepare the rest of these. Now painting these jars and applying the gesso is also very simple. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this and we'll sh shake it up really well. We'll open this up and we'll squirt a bunch out because we have a lot to do. I have two different size paint brushes here just so I can apply paint to different areas a little more effectively. And all we're gonna do, let's get this nice and saturated and we will just begin applying the paint, the gesso, excuse me. There's no trick or science to this, you just lather it on. And that's it. Now we just go ahead and let this dry. We set it off to the side. It'll take maybe five minutes to dry completely. It'll look very similar to this when it's fully dry. Um, a lot of people will not prepare their jars. You'll see online, uh, they'll just go ahead and apply paint directly. And after you move them around and touch them a little bit, the paint will begin to flake off and it leaves kind of an undesirable appearance. And then you have to go back and repaint them to prevent the light from getting in and algae from growing and things like that. So this is a great solution to fix that problem. It doesn't take a lot of work to prepare these jars properly. So I will go ahead and set this to the side and we'll prepare the other four jars.
piece of cake. I'm gonna go wash these off in some water. Some warm water is all it takes to clean those up. And then we'll wait for these to finish drying and we'll come back for the next step. All right, so we let them dry for about 90 minutes actually. There were some thick areas that needed a little longer to dry. And this is what we end up with. It's a very opaque, chalky type feeling texture on here. Um, you, if you don't want to paint them and do gesso, that's fine. You can also wrap them in aluminum foil. You can wrap them in duct tape, cardstock, construction paper. Anything really works to block the light. I just like the look and the longevity of painting them with gesso a little bit better. So now what we're going to do is we're going to paint these black. And that process is very similar and straightforward to gessoing the jars. But there's one very important difference that you need to remember to do before you start painting. And that's smash the like button. Nothing special here, just throw on the paint. One down, four to go. Okay, so I actually let these dry for about four days. Uh, the paint I used was quite tacky, uh, but this is our finished product right here. It looks pretty good. So we got five of these. That's what the inside looks like. So we have five of these. So the last portion of this is actually quite easy. What we'll do is we'll grab our hydroponic pebbles and our net cups and our foam collars and our lids. And then what we are going to do is we will just add a few hydroponic pebbles to these cups. So we have them filled to about right here, and we'll just insert the foam collar. And there we go, there's the finished product. Just simply drop it into the container, grab your lid. we have it, a fully complete crack key hydroponic system.
Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you.